This isn't clickbait. I am actually leaving Geek Gaming Scenics at the end of this month. But I'll go into more details about that at the end of this video. But for now, I'm doing a 10mm Mordime table. The reason I'm doing this as my last video is I absolutely love making small scale terrain. You've seen me shrink Kings of War, you've seen me shrink Warhammer 40k, so why not do another iconic game like Mordine? It's far more interesting than taking a game like Mordine and shrinking it down to centimetre scale rather than inch scale means it's still playable even though it's very very small. And with it being smaller scale, I've already done videos on the terrain that I'm using and things, it means it's cheap and it's also very space saving. Now before we get into the video, let me tell you about this video sponsor, which is Anthems of War. Anthems of War is a miniature agnostic fantasy tabletop skirmish war game with a narrative twist. It takes a lot of inspiration from tabletop role playing games that can be played almost any scale you want to be, which is why it's perfect for this video. And it can be played on an area as small as a kitchen table. Inside this core rule book, you're going to find a set of quick start rules that you can use to play your first few battles, standard rules that you can slowly add to the quick start battles to ramp up the complexity of your play, instructions for building any character you can dream up, including sample weapons, equipment and character profiles. It's a robust magic system with over 120 unique spells across 13 spell schools and 14 scenarios that you can stand alone games are woven together as part of a massive campaign. You can buy this book as an actual product or download as a PDF. Check all the links below guys and if you're into playing, Anthems of War might be a system for you. So like all my boards, I start with a basic frame. This is just some 6mm ply with some 25mm beading around the outside. But I've made this to the size of 48 centimeters by 48 centimeters. So it's the equivalent of a 4x4, four four, but in centimeters. Now I'm planning on building like a cathedral on top of a mound. So I'm just building up a bit of polystyrene and I'm putting some dots of uh, fast dry basing glue down uh, and using cocktail sticks to adhere that piece in place. Now all the terrain that I'm going to be using on this board and anything that I actually 3D print myself is all going to be done in FDM. If you want to see where I got these bits of terrain from, I'll link the video in the description below. Um, but I also 3D printed a few bits on FDM as well. For like detailing roads, walls, I'm using these rubber texture mats that I think they're called Red, Red Deluxe. I think they're called. Again, I'll link them in the description below. And I stuck these onto some foam board just to make them a bit more rigid. And all I'm doing is cutting them into strips to the size that I want and then sticking them on the side of the raised mound where we're going to be putting the cathedral. They are very small. They're an N-gauge scale texture sheet, but there's many different railway components you could use for this. Or you could even sculpt something yourself if you wish. I just did this for speed and it looks rather good once it's in. For attaching the bits of foam board on the back, all I did was use some of them skewers, a bit of glue, and then press that onto the skewers so they're more than secure. For the actual church itself, I'm using just some misprints because I couldn't find what I wanted, so I just made it from loads of random pieces into a cross. For the rest of the walkways, I'm still using that texture sheet to make the paths. Um, and I'm just cutting that to shape and I'm still leaving it on the foam board as I want the paths to be slightly raised and we are going to be putting this ground materials and stuff down which will hide the height and it just adds an extra layer of height and difference to the board so it's not completely flat. For sticking these down I'm just using PVA glue because it's card onto polystyrene so it should dry pretty easily. I have gone a bit overkill um, but I was leaving it for the weekend to dry um, but it was well secure once the weekend had passed. Now for the centre of the cathedral, church, wherever you want to call it, I've just put some black foam board down um, just to raise it to the same level as the paths. But I'm going to take out a big chunk out the middle because I want to put a big glowing warp stone in the middle. 
it's for Mordine, but I also want it so I can remove this. So if I just wanted it as like a medieval gaming table, I could take the warp stone off. So all I'm doing to make the crate is just dig it out with a knife and we'll fix all that with modeling compound later. Now to fix all the plastic pieces to foam or the paper, I'm using pink grip. The reason I'm doing this is it's such a great adhesive. It dries very quickly and it's the best thing that I've found for actually sticking resin or FDM prints to paper, wood or even polystyrene and just literally get nice ample amount on the bottom and press them into place and they should be pretty still after about 20 minutes or so. And best thing about it, if it does splurge out anywhere, you can just squeegee it out and make it blend in as like it's part of the terrain anyway. And then for the rest of the ground material, I'm just using the good old faithful uh, modeling compound to hide all that work we've done with the board and just get some nice natural landforms and sort the creator out. Now the board was looking rather flat at this time, even though I put the landforms and things in and it were needing some extra details. So I used my FDM printer to print out these six millimeter walls um, and I upscaled them a little bit so they'd fit in with a 10 millimeter scale. And all I'm doing with them is super gluing them down to the uh, rubber mat. And uh, it just adds that bit more interest and adds purpose to the building and everything else. And I add these all over the board. So for ground covers on this board, I'm just putting some fast dry basing glue down and then I'm using a mixture of tile grout and soil sieved super fine. The way that I'm putting this down is I'm only putting a very thin covering on just to get a texture to the compound to resemble soil and dirt. That's all I'm using it for. And once that's all down, I just seal that in place with matte scenic sealant. While this is still wet, I do get some Grimdark City rubble and I start building up rubble piles as if it's the damaged building and just spread that around and scatter that around. The colours I'm not so bothered about at the moment because I will be painting this, um, but we will be using other base readies to add colours and accent to natural colours later. Now, to add a few more bits of detail and interest and cover for the models, I apply some tombstones all over base and I put a little bit of a water fountain at the base of the uh, the church. All these components have been printed on FDM and I'm really shocked at how well FDM looks at a very small scale. It is working in its favour because it is small and harder to see but it just makes this sort of terrain super affordable and if you like FDM printing I'm actually happy with the quality at the small scale. What do you think? Let me know. Now for painting, I just prime it all black and then I give it a dark grey airbrush just to bring out some of the details. And I just keep lightening and lightening the greys with the airbrush in areas and patches where I want it. And the reason that I'm doing it like this is I want that grim dark look and I want it to be very dark and dull. Now. I'm using a very bright browny yellow for the dirt, but the reason I'm going so bright is we're going to be washing all this down and oil washers do considerably darken things. So the reason I'm going so bright with the greys and the browns is because we're going to be washing this right down. And as you can see, the black oil wash is very dark. Yes, the benefit of the oil wash is we can rub it off in areas if we wish, but I'm not going to be doing that as such. I really, really want this to be really dark and dank. Where there's going to be like regular foot traffic and people going, I will use a bit of paper towel on things like the paths. And this is just so we can dab it up in the centers just to lighten it up and add a bit more weathering and texture to them paths and details. Now for the big crater. Uh, and the big pile of warp stone. What I'm doing is I'm using a bit of plastic packaging over a lump of cork for the shape. And what we're doing is I'm trying to make a, a template where we can mount a, a light underneath and then put some crystals on top of this so it resembles like a big piece of warp stone that's broke into that church. Be very careful with this because you are warming plastic up. Don't heat it up too much, but just get enough so it'll sort of vacuum form itself around. Once you've cut that to shape, 
using some crystals from our range, what you can do then is literally pour on some UV cure resin and then stick all the green crystals in place where you want them. Because it's viscous enough, it'll hold them roughly in place. And then all you've got to do is once you've got that completely covered how you want it, is literally take it outside and let that cure or chuck it in your UV station. And don't be afraid to pour more over the top if you need to, just to secure all them rocks in place. Now for the LEDs, I'm doing nothing fancy at all. All I'm doing is getting these stupidly cheap tea lights from the pound shop, dismantling it so all that's left is the battery and the LED and the, the bottom of it. And all I'm doing is I'm going to mount that underneath the actual frame that we made out of the plastic and the crystals. And as you can see, that little divot that I've done, it just sinks and sits nice. And that just sits on top and hides itself rather well. And the reason that I've done it like this is if I want to use it as a generic board that's not Mordine, I can literally just take the weird crystal, warp crystal, whatever you want to call it, off. And it's a completely generic medieval board. But what I thought I'd do is because we're going for that Mordine look, I'd get some more of the crystals out and I'd just literally scatter them about. Now, I don't want to glue these down. I just want them so I can take them off when I'm done. You could use these as objective markers or things to collect or even just have them on the board for aesthetics. Because they're not glued down, you can just remove them anyway. Now, for some extra details, I'm literally just adding sea foam i'm cutting off very very small bits and i'm adding it as like old bushes or weeds or whatever they want to be and i'm just literally hiding any areas that i don't like i'm also doing it for nice little trees but i'm not going to put any foliage or anything like that on them as i want it all to be dead and as dark and as grim dark as you like now for the rest of the actual board, I'm not doing anything different than what I've done on the church side of it. I'm just using some pieces for roads and I'm using the rest of the buildings and just sorting a layout. And for painting these, I'm literally just dry brushing a few colors on them. With it being so small, it doesn't take much to make them look good. And with it being so dark and grim anyway, you only need to do a little bit of painting on these. One thing I do want to talk about at this point is just for FDM prints, look at how well they look. Now, you've got to admit that this is pretty close up under a macro lens, but for small scale terrain, your eye doesn't really percept the layer lines at this sort of scale. And for me, I don't see the point of printing terrain at this scale on resin. Using FDM printers are becoming something that I really enjoy doing for something this size. And... It's a pity that I've only just found this out towards the end of me doing content um, because it's actually really cool. But for the rest of the uh, gaming table, all I'm doing now is just spreading some base reddies around for some extra colours, some extra accent, a bit more debris. But I'm not going too heavy because I want this to actually be playable. And the one thing that I did do is I actually went in with a few flocks that are similar colours to what I actually painted the base of the board. But when it came to sealing all this down, I mixed some black ink into the uh, matte scenic sealant and then I sprayed that all over. It's not something that I recorded, it was just something I wanted to try. And it actually toned it all down and made it look awesome and to say it's a part of the glue step and it had some whitewash in it it just saved me an, an entire other step and as you can see once that's dry it looks absolutely amazing i'm really happy with this gaming table it's been nice to end on something that i've really wanted to do and just putting the little bits of lights and the little bit of accents in there you could play mordine on this at 10 millimeters so guys, yes, I am leaving Geek Gaming Scenics. All good things have to come to an end. I've been making content now on YouTube for eight years and it's getting to me. I'm at a point where I'm just fed up. Um, so I'm going out into the real world to get a normal job. Don't worry guys, Geek Gaming Scenics is still functional. The business has been built up. We've got my friends and family all working here still. So please still send your support to Geek Gaming Scenics because you're supporting them. It's just, I'm ready to leave. I'm wanting to have a change up in my life. So I'm going to go get a normal job. 
which will help with stress and other issues because it's hard work making content like this for such a long time. I hope you all understand, guys. It's nothing personal. There's nothing wrong with me and geek gaming at all. It's just good things come to an end and I'm ready to move on. But I'd like to thank everybody for all the support and everything that's happened over these years. We couldn't have done it without you. And Geek Gaming Scenics will still love the support. And all the new products and everything like that, they're getting put together by people that have worked with me from the start and are as knowledgeable, if not more so, in certain areas. So you're still going to be getting great products, guys. Thank you for all your support and thanks for everything. And I'll... Uh, not see you for another video. Love, love, love.